Hello and welcome back to Right on the Money. I'm Pastor Devin and uh, this class is designed, uh, we do it the last Monday of the month, to help you uh, be successful at money. God wants you to be successful in your life. He wants you to have an amazing life and money is a big part of that. And uh, so uh, each class we delve, with, we delve into some different subjects that help you uh, think of better ways uh, to be good stewards of your money. And today we're going to talk about uh, different ideas of uh, saving. Because, uh, you know, everybody today, you know, with everything that's going on, the pandemic, everything that's going on in the world, uh, we might think, uh, we, we worry about our, our, our nest eggs or our savings or do we have enough money to pay for this or, or to pay for that. It says in the Bible in 1 Corinthians 4 too that, we're, that good stewards must be found trustworthy. Now that, that, that's an interesting thing. Uh, how do you become trustworthy? And that's, it, it's real simple. How does anybody trust anybody? By what they do, the actions that they do, uh, uh, what choices they make uh, determine whether you're trustworthy or not. And God wants to know if we're trustworthy. And he had, gave us a brain. He expects us to use it. So today I have some, uh, some really neat uh, tips uh, on how you can save uh, money in your life because because uh, a lot of people don't have savings. We've talked this many times that uh, over 80% of Americans don't even have an, an emergency fund. Uh, if something really happened in their life, could they take care of it? And you know what? Having peace of mind is something we need to have. And so these are just some neat tips to get your way to start saving that, that are pretty, I think, are pretty creative. Uh, they're by no means all the ways to do it. Uh, and if you can think of a way, feel free to shoot us a, a note after this class and we can maybe add it to the next class. Uh, so tonight we're going to do a couple ones. The first one is one of my favorite. Uh, but when I did this college class two and a half years ago, it was one of my first classes. I mentioned this. It's called uh, what? Well, it's called rounding up. Uh, when you go out to a place, um, say you go out to a restaurant or you go to the grocery store, whatever it is, and you pay for your bill and it comes out to be twenty three dollars and forty two cents. What you do is when you get home, you when you put the bill in your in your account, you put the twenty two forty eight in, you know, that you wrote out, and then you round it up to twenty five dollars. And you take that $0.52 cents and you put it into savings. Uh, somewhere where you won't touch it at all. Just round it up. I mean, you're not really going to miss that $0.52. Cents. If you would have, it would have been twenty three forty two. it would have been $24 for the $0.58 more cents. Great. Put it away and do it over time. Um, I, I, I did this for a while. And, and I saved over $200 a year just by doing that. I mean, it's amazing because it's, you just round it up in your checkbook and it, then it and it's there. You automatically save that money. You think about how many places you go. The, like I said, the grocery store, the gas station, out to eat. Um, you pay your bills. You know, if your electric bill is one seventy four oh one. Guess what? Add ninety nine cents to to it when you write to put the check in your register, and you'll be automatically saving money. Isn't that amazing? Uh, and and I, I, it's just a unique way uh, to save money that you won't even think about. Uh, and and uh, so it's a great thing to do. Um, so that's one way you can save money with very little effort uh, on your own. Uh, the next one is called the 24-hour rule. Now here's what the 24-hour rule. It applies only to expensive purchases or things that are unnecessary. And what basically it's, it's self-explanatory. Before you buy something that is really expensive or unnecessary, wait 24 hours before you buy it. And during those 24 hours, a good practice, you know, since it's coming from God's point of view, hey, ask God, can I have that? Or should I buy that? Get some advice from God. Get counsel from the Lord and the Holy Spirit. You know, and, and here's the thing. If it's unnecessary, now we're talking about unnecessary or really expensive items. Um, if it's not necessary in your life, then guess what? You can wait. A lot of the horrible choices we make in finances are not the things that we have to spend money on. Like we got to pay our rent. We got to pay... Uh, our, we gotta buy food. We gotta buy a bass for our, gas for our car. I think it said bass. Don't put fish in your car. Gas for your car. All those different things. You know you gotta do this. But you know there's things. Uh, should I go out tonight? Should I buy this bigger car? Should I do? Uh, do I really need to buy that that thing on the way out the door? Or this thing I really want. You know if it's not necessary to your survival and to your basic needs. You know. It's okay if it waits, because guess what? It'll still be there 24 hours from now. You know, I say, oh, it might be sold out tomorrow. You know what? I, I've been through, th think about Christmas. You know, they always go, everything sells out, like on the, the, the Black Friday or now the Cyber Monday and all these different things. But you know, if you wait long enough, it comes back in. Uh, it, it, it'll be there. And, and then, but here's what you'll have. When you buy it now, now that you wait the 24 hours, or if it goes outside, you have to wait a month or two to get it back. 
when you do buy it, you'll have peace of mind that you have the ability to buy it and it doesn't stress your finances. Wow, isn't that a great thing? So that's, that's another way to keep you from avo- from, from taking the money. You know, you know, your money, you, you work hard to get it. Uh, and, and you don't want just to, to run away, okay? You want to make sure you have a handle on that. And, and uh, so, so taking 24 hours on things that are unnecessary or emergency, that doesn't mean you can't go out and have fun or buy something you don't want. I mean, something you don't want, something you want. You can do that. Just think about, hey, uh, do I really need it right now because it will affect my bottom line. Because the last thing you want to do is buy something, get hooked into something, and then not be able to pay something that's really important in your life. Uh, so, so like I said, it will be there uh, later on. Another thing about saving, um, a lot of people have these great ideas about how to save money. Uh, and they have these grandiose ideas. We're going to save all this money over this long period of time. Don't get caught in that trap. Uh, now, now, you can at times have long-term saving goals, but here's the deal. Have a bunch of short-term ones that lead up to the long one. Um, a difference between spending, so I'm going to save $20 a week for a month. Now, get me 80 bucks, right? Or a five-week month, 100 bucks. Versus saying I'm going to plan to spend a, th- I'm going to plan to save a thousand dollars over the course of a year. The problem is, over the course of your things will happen, uh, and then what? You, you'll see yourself not getting to the, your goal, and what will happen is you'll get discouraged and you'll stop doing it all together. Well, having savings is an important thing. If you do twenty dollars a week uh, and you set a goal to have a hundred dollars in five weeks, that's an attainable goal to get to. If you get a little bit behind, you can put a little bit to it, and you attain that goal, you feel so great about yourself. What if you don't attain that goal? Well, guess what? It's it's not like a whole year you got to wait to start over. You can start back over then shortly after that. And, and you'll find it would be much easier to do shorter goals, and then you'll be excited because you actually made it. Then you might even make bigger goals uh, over the shorter term, and your savings will begin to grow. Because if we don't make our goals, if we make a big goal and we don't get to it, guess what happens? We get discouraged, and then we just don't want to complete it. And, and God wants you to be successful. He wants you to have savings. He wants you to be able to take care of things. He wants you to be able to buy the things you want to buy. And in order to do that, we got to save up for it. So I encourage you, if, you, if you're trying to, if you struggle with savings and building savings, say, man, I've tried and tried and tried over the years. Here's a great, uh, this is a great idea. It's try to do it in short, short little bunches. Uh, say like for a month, I'm going to save $20 a week for a month. And then if you reach your goal, you're going to feel great. If you don't, hey, guess what? Another month you start over again. Maybe you change it to $10 a week, Okay. Or whatever, whatever number you want to put out there that maybe you can readjust it after a week, after a couple weeks, and then say, okay, this is more attainable for me. Because once you start attaining a savings goal, you see it happen, it, it, it's kind of like uh, when people lose weight. They just can't wait to lose more weight. It just, it just comes infectious. And it's a good infection. Uh, and, and God will bless you. And, and you'll feel so much better. You'll have peace because you know you can do it. And it'll encourage you to make bigger steps in your personal savings. Um, this next one. Um, um, how much does something cost? You might say, what are you talking about there? How much does something cost? Well, it, it, this is, what I want you to do is I want you to take a step back. When, you, when you're looking at buying something, calculate the cost of it. You might say, but I, I see the cost. I know it's in my checkbook. Here. No, I want you to take the cost in terms of your life, your lifestyle, like for better terms. Um, imagine um, you, you're watching. Uh, now, what, you, work, you work, right? So let's just take an arbitrary number. Say, say you look at this $50 pair of sneakers, okay? And you're questioning whether you should spend the money on them. Um, but then you say you're making $10 an hour. Well, now you got to look at it. You got to say, that $50 sneakers cost me five hours of work. Is what I'm buying really worth that much work? And if you think about that, well, you, you make better choices on what you're buying. Now, you might find something, maybe that, that's just the, the thing you really want. Yeah, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. That, that, that's what it equates to. Okay, great. Then you feel better about your purchase. I'm not saying you can't purchase it, but think about your purchase in terms of, of, of what you make and how much does that actually cost you. Or you might say, well, I, I want to go out and buy that, uh, that Starbucks that costs $5 every morning. And, uh, or I can go home and make my own coffee for, for about 39 cents. Well, if you're making ten dollars an hour, that Starbucks cost you thirty. That cost you thirty minutes. <laughs> Plus, <clears throat> the time you got to wait in the store for the person to make it. Uh, but it costs you thirty minutes of work time. So you, you got to kind of think about uh, wh- how, how does that fit in in, in in money you're earning. So calculate those things when you're trying to 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 live your life. Say you wonder where all the money's going. If you think about it that way, you might think about, hey, I, I'd rather do something a little bit different than that. 
Um, because you know what? This is what's worth working for. And this, well, now I think about it, really, it's not really worth working all that time just for that little enjoyment and time. Um, and and uh, so, so think about those things. Um, and, and that's a great way to look at things, especially when we're thinking about what to buy. Um, next up, here, here's something. Um, in today's day and age, uh, you, know, a lot of, you get a lot of junk mail now on your computer or on your cell phone. Um, here's the thing you need to do. From the stores that you really love to buy from, here's what you need to do. You need to unsubscribe. Unsubscribe from their emails, their texts, and their alerts. And you say, well, I love this store. Why should I do that? Well, they get paid a lot of money. They pay, they pay advertisers and these people to sit behind these screens and create these ads to get you go, boy, I just got to have that. And it's a store you love, so they already know you want to buy from them. And so they're, they're not dumb. They're going to create things to entice you to spend money that you might otherwise not have spent uh, because you get caught up in the emotions. And don't think that the advertising game is not about emotions. It sure is. They want to get you so pumped up that you go, this is the greatest deal in the world. I just got to have it. When you had, don't got to have it. That's how you end up with two or three of the same thing. That they're like, man, why do I have so many of these things? Um, and in, the, in your favorite stores, those are the ones you got to unsubscribe from simply because um, they're the ones that you're probably going to follow the temptation for. Uh, the ones that you never go to, hey, you probably won't pay attention to their, to their email anyways. But the stores you love, they're, they're going to get you hooked. And you end up seeing money go out of your savings without even thinking about it. Because they prey on your emotions. They prey on the fact that you love that store. You just got to have that next thing. So uh, so do yourself a favor. Don't don't even be tempted. And here's how you're not tempted. At the end of all those, you know, those things you get on your, on your email, on your phone, at the bottom there's a little, it's, really, it's usually really little, it's usually in blue. But you look for it, it says unsubscribe from future emails or something like that. Click on that and it'll take it to a screen and they'll ask you, are you sure? And be sure and say, no, I don't want to have future emails from you or future uh, ads from you. And guess what? Uh, they'll stop. Now, here's the great thing. You might say, boy, well, how am I know what's going on in the store? If you really love that store, you'll, you'll, you'll know what's going on. You won't go back to that store when you want something. And you, it, but here's the deal. They won't be tempting you all the time. And, and you won't fall, fall, fall to that. So that's just, that, that's just uh, something that, that, that you'll be amazed how much money you'll save by un, just unsubscribing to emails from your favorite stores because you won't be buying there as much. And then when you do buy from there, it'll be what, when you really want to buy something and it'll really be something you want rather than I bought this as an impulse buy and, boy, I saw, and, and then my, I saw some of my savings go away. So, uh, so that's something that, that I'd suggest to do. On this next one, um, there's pros and cons to both sides. And I, I'm going to take the con to this, to this side. And, and I'll give you my reasons why. Uh, some people say that make do auto pay your bills, make your life easier. You know that that could save you and says it'll save you money, it'll save you time, it'll save you energy. Yeah, it can. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't think you should ever auto pay anything. And like I said, it's not the gospel. I'm just giving you my opinion. You can write to me and say I'm a terrible person about this one, but let me tell you why I think auto pay is a bad thing. Because when you do auto pay then you don't really watch what's happening. Uh, you know, when you pay your, all your bills and don't auto pay, it forces you to know what's going out of your checking account. Auto pay just goes out. And you're like, oh, what if you forgot about that and, and you didn't account for that in your checking, in your checking uh, ledger one month? That could be dangerous, couldn't it? Um, and and uh, what if that auto pay accidentally takes the wrong amount of money out and you could end up bouncing checks or things like that i've actually had that happen i was uh uh at a i was on staff at a church in texas uh new heights church uh yeah i know this is new beginnings but different church new heights church in texas and uh, we were going on a trip and my, the pastor was with me in the car and he was showing me his bills and and his phone bill got overcharged one month and he's like i'm on auto pay all this why, why this? and so he, we're on this thing i called and actually took care of him it actually took me forever to convince them that they overcharged him and i had to show him this that and the other thing and and eventually i got his money back but it took a while but now he didn't bounce anything but you know for someone who's living on the edge uh one month like that or what if they had an extra zero say you're paying 150 dollars a month and one month they actually done you accidentally charge you 1500 dollars. that happens 
Now, it doesn't happen all the time. But it just has to happen to you once, and it's a bad thing. So, so I don't suggest you ought to think. I, I, I have, th this is a theory, I, I, a theory that I live by. Know every dollar that leaves your checking account. Know why it's leaving. Uh, and, and be aware when it's leaving. Okay, and when you auto pay, you you forget about it and you don't think about it. And yeah, it saves you time, but doesn't necessarily save you money. And actually, what might say you might you might go a month and go, oh, auto pay. Hey, the bill jumped up this month. You know that happens. You know what happens to me all the time with my online services, and they'll, they'll try to do that. But because I don't do auto pay, I catch it and I give a call and say, why is my bill going up? And then we negotiate, and I get it back down to where it was every time I get it back down. Because they an auto pay, they expect you just to forget about it. And then you, they'll put an extra dollar here or two dollars here or three dollars here. Over a couple months, that adds up to quite a bit. Um, and and uh, when you pay your bills, you see that. You know, and, and uh, I've had it with my dish bill. It, it go up a penny. I'm going to call, hey, why'd that go up that way? Uh, now, you might think that that's being re really crazy. But I'm, I've had times where the bill's been up ten bucks. Or if I let that happen for a year, that's $120 without even thinking about it. If it goes, say, three months, that's $30 out of my account. I paid it. I agreed to pay it. Guess because that's auto pay. You're never getting that money back when you're on auto pay. But if you're not on auto pay and they raise your bill, they haven't got your money yet. And if they haven't got your money yet, you can always negotiate. Or you can cancel a service and go to another service. That's how I deal with this. I just threaten to go somewhere else. And guess what? Oh, no, no. We, we've had you for so many years. Yeah, we, we'll keep it. I, I, my dish bill has been 80, under $90 ever, forever. And I have all the channels. You know, people, most people are paying $150, $200 a month. That's because I stay on top of it. I don't do auto pay. And when, a, when a, I see a bill change, I because uh, I force because it forces me to look at the bill. Because when you're auto pay, the bill comes, you might not even open the envelope. You might say, well, I do that anyways on auto pay. That's great, but most people don't. Because it's so easy on auto pay. I don't have to worry about that. No, don't, don't, don't let that happen. And then when that happens, you know, whew, you always know what's going to happen in your bill. Okay? And, and, and keep watching it. And it forces you to do that. And it's really important to do that you need to make sure. And bottom line on the auto pay is no money should ever leave your hand without you touching it some way. Whether it's writing a check, paying it online, you need to be involved in it because then you can't go to somebody, well, I didn't know what happened. That's the last thing you want to say about it because you know, no one's going to help you to say that. But if you know why, and once again, when you don't auto pay, the person asking for the money doesn't get the money to actually do something. And if you don't like what they're doing, you can change it. You can negotiate. That's great. So, uh, so keep that in mind. All right. Next one is when you're out, uh, you know, saving money. You know, sometimes buying cheap isn't always the best way to go. Just because something's cheaper than something else doesn't mean it's it's better. The question comes down to quality, durability. Will it last longer? If something lasts a long time, it'll pay for itself over time. Um, back to the church in New Heights, uh, the pastor there he wanted to buy this camera for the church, an HD camera. And there was a choice between this certain camera that cost X amount of dollars and this cheaper camera that costs a whole lot less. My advice was, buy the, buy, buy, buy the more expensive camera. It has a better warranty, and it'll pay for itself over time. No, but what he decided to do, he decided, hey, I'm going to buy the cheaper camera. Well, guess what? That camera broke. I think we had to buy three cameras uh, over time. And ended up, we ended up spending a lot more money for the three cameras, then we already spent for the one camera, because see, these three cameras, they came with like a one or two year warranty. This other camera came with a 10 year warranty on everything. We would have bought it. We never did because we just kept buying new cameras. But if we would have bought it, we would have saved money in the long run. Now, that, that, that's a big example. Another example could be, you know, clothes. Shoes, for example. I, I used to buy the cheapest shoes I could find. They last me a month or two, and then they blow out. I had to buy another one. Now I'm spending ten dollars, fifteen dollars a month on shoes. Now I now I go out and I, I buy good shoes. Uh, I have right now I have the Adidas shoes. That's a name brand. Now I bought them from there uh, when I was on vacation. I went to their their outlet store and I got a hundred twenty dollars shoes for sixty bucks. You know I had these shoes now August, September, October, November, August, September, October, November, December, January, February, March, April, almost May. So I've had them for nine months for 60 bucks. 
I'm not spending ten, fifteen dollars a month for the cheap shoes. That'd been a for nine months. That's what ninety, one hundred and thirty-five dollars. Wow. So sometimes buying quality, you know, once again, calculate versus how much you get paid and all that. But you know, buying quality that lasts longer can save you money in the long run rather than buying the cheapest thing. Now there are times where the cheap thing is just as good as the is the as the thing. But you know that's why we use our brains to say, okay, but this this, this thing will last longer. Now. If you're just paying for name brand for name brand, you, not their stuff not always lasting either. You know, do your research, see what's going on, see what will last longer, and uh, and sometimes the more expensive thing lasts longer. Now, in other case, sometimes the most expensive stuff doesn't last any longer than the cheap stuff. So so keep that in mind. You know, uh, what what's really going to serve your needs, and that will also save you money in your pocket. So that, that's a good way to do that. I love this next one. Designate one day a week as a no spend day in your family. Now think about this. You know, every day we go out and spend money on this or that or the other thing. But take your whole family and say, one day a week, we're going to purposely not spend any money. No matter what. We're not going to go out to eat. We're not going to buy anything from the stores. We're not going to go to the grocery shop. We're not. We're going to take a day of the week and we're not going to spend a dime. You'll find out a couple of things. Number one, you'll find out there's a lot of things you can do and be happy without spending money. Second of all, you know, you'll find out you'll be surprised how much you save. Because on average, you have four days a month where you don't spend a dime. How much more money will be in your bank account than a month? You'll be surprised at how things that we think about that we just buy every day or think or just go out on the whim and buy. And we have a day a week, four days a month, where we purposely say, I'm going to resist the urge to spend any money. You're going to have more money in your bank account that you can then put into savings. Isn't that great? So, so try that. And, and just so you know, it's going to be hard because if you think about it, we're, we're used to spending money pretty much whenever we think about it. And if you have a family of four or five, whatever, you know, you, all of them have to stake the same day. Okay? And you look through your register and say, oh, there's a day a month where I don't have any money going out. And then you realize the other days, you know, it's like, wow, that, that, that adds up to quite a bit. Well, what a great way to, to do that. And, and, and you'll fall in love with it. And, and you'll, you're, you're, you'll be like, now we can go on better vacations. We can go out more. We can do things because now we have money that we don't, the, the, the discretional money that we, we were just throwing at willy-nilly stuff that now we got, we got extra money in your account. It's an amazing thing. So try it. It'll be hard because that day will come and it'll be like, hey, mom, I want this or dad, I want this. Or you'll go in there and like, well, I got to go get my coffee and my don't. No. You'll be like, no, I can't do that today. This is our no spend day. It would also help you teach you some good habits, and maybe you'll, some of the things you do spend money on without thinking about it, you'll think about a little more. And guess what? You might not spend as much, and guess what? More money will be in your account that you can put into savings, and you'll be a good steward. Um, another one, one of my favorites, um, water at restaurants. When you go out to eat, order water. Water is free. Now, some places do bottled water and they charge you. Make sure you ask for the cup of water, not the bottled water. Uh, but if you look at most restaurants, you'll see uh, anywhere from two dollars for for a soda. They say unlimited refills, great. I've seen places up to three dollars and forty nine cents for a soda. Here's the deal: if you have a family of four and say it's two fifty on average, okay, that's ten extra dollars to your bill. You know, just get water. You can go to the store and buy a whole two liter for a buck. <laughs> <laughs> and feed your whole family, you know? <laughs> but you're spending 10 bucks at a restaurant, okay? Don't do that. And what you'll notice is, say, say for a family of four, okay? If you do that every time, you know, instead of spending $40, you might only spend $30 at the restaurant. But you save 10 bucks. That means every fourth time you go out, it's free. But what if you every time you take that $10 and put it into savings? So you go out three times a month. That's $30 a month times 12 months. That's $360 a year in savings. Or $360 a year you can use for Christmas time, for Christmas presents, or for vacation. Just because you drink water at the restaurant. Or you can go out more. Because you're saving the money from doing that. You know? So when you go to a restaurant, think about that. Think about doing that. And, 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 and then put either put that money into savings. What a great way. Hey, we want to eat. Uh, okay, we would have spent $10 on drinks. So we're going to put $10 into savings. Because here's the deal. You would have, normally you would have gone and bought the drinks anyway. So it should be no problem for you to go home, uh, take the $10 and move it from your checking account to your savings account. 
because you would have spent it anyways. So why not start doing that and start saving yourself a boatload of money just simply by drinking water? And the last one tonight, I want to talk to you about insurance. Whether it's auto insurance, homeowner's insurance, whatever it is, you need to shop it every year. Here's what most people do. Almost every American does this. Their homeowner's insurance is tied to their mortgage. Oh, whatever that homeowner's, whatever that insurance company is going to charge, hey, that's what we're going to, it comes out of our escrow, we don't even think about it. Because in mortgages, it's an escrow and they pay it for you. Uh, if you don't have, if you're paying yourself, look at the, don't just take whatever the bill you get from the insurance company and pay it. Same with your auto insurance. Every year, it seems like rates go up, right? And, and, and I got tired of it. I was back in my, um, I think in my early thirties and I got tired of seeing that happen. And so I called up my I, nationwide that time and I said, I've been with you now for like 10 years. And why is my insurance still going up year after year? And I'm like, why? why? And he says, well, it's just where it is to pay our bills. And I'm like, I, I, I don't want to do this. So you know what I did? I went out and got an independent agent and started shopping around. You know, I got, I, I got a deal for insurance that was 20% less than I was paying than, than, than the, uh, I was paying when I first started 10 years ago. <laughs> I said, I want And so I went to the guy, I did the insurance. I said, the nationwide guy, I called him and said, you know, I've been a customer 10 years, me and my wife, you know, uh, and, and uh, can you do anything about it? You know what he said to me? He said, this is just the way it is. And, and you know, if you want to get a rate like that, you're about to shop it every year. And that's just a pain. You know, when I heard that, I was like, you know I can get a better rate. You, you're going to do it for new customers because you're going to try to get new customers too. Guess what? I'm going to shop it around. And I do have all my insurances, my health insurance, my auto insurance. When I had a house, I don't, right now I'm in the parsonage. When I had a house, I shopped insurance around. Because every year they raise the price. Well, guess what? When you go to a new company, guess what? They always want new clients. You know what they do? They give you a discount for being a new client. Isn't that great? Now, you might say, well, okay, well, what about the next year? Well, next year, you, the insurance companies are a dime a dozen. Go online. Make sure they're, 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 they're A-plus rated. I make sure. I, I never get a B, C, U, D. Never an F company. I mean, always A-plus company or better. And you'd be amazed. They're not always the ones you see on TV. And because an A plus company is one that always pays. You get below A plus, they may drag out your claim if you have a claim. Now, I have, I've had very few claims over my life. I, I can't. I bet you I can count them all on my fingers how many claims I've had for auto insurance or home insurance in my lifetime. But they always pay if you have an A plus. So make sure you do your homework. Don't just take any any insurance company out there. Because why do you have insurance to pay when you need it, right? But shop it around every year. You'll be amazed. Go to an independent agent because they, they shop all the ones. You know what you do? And then say the next year they raise your, say they raise your thing. Here's another cool thing about like the big guys. You leave one of the big guys after a couple years, after 24 months, they'll start sending you things saying, come back and be a customer and we'll give you this great rate. So you go back for a year and then a year later, guess what? They'll jack your rate up and guess what? When they jack it up, you say, bye-bye. I'm going to another insurance company. It takes effort to do this. But you know what? It'll save you a lot of money. You know what? Why, why, why let them raise your rate for not doing anything? And here's how I know that, they're, that, 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 that really you should never have your insurance rate raised. Because if that was the case and they really needed to raise your rate, you wouldn't be able to go to another company and get it so much cheaper. And then two years later, that same company you left wouldn't come back to you and offer you an even better rate to try them out again if they truly were losing money. And they truly need you to charge you more. So you can keep your, your home your home insurance, your auto insurance, your health insurance. You can keep it exactly the same every single year. As long as you're willing to do the effort and shop it. But what do most people do? They just renew their auto policy, renew their home insurance policy, renew their health insurance policy. Oh, it's going up 100 bucks. Well, that's just the way it is. No, it's not. It's not the way it is. There's so many choices out there in the insurance world. They just don't want to tell you that. So go out, shop it every year, see what happens. And in this day and age, you can go to companies, you can go online and get your own quote. You don't even need a, a broker. Um, what a great deal. And you got another cost. If you don't use a broker, guess what? They're not pay, you're not paying them anything. Uh, they, they, they don't get their fee. 
So it's really neat. You can keep, I think one of the biggest lies in the world is insurance rates always go up. You don't have to. If you put the work in, your insurance rates should always stay the same, if not get better. Mine always get better. Since I've been at this church, I give you an example. I pay my own, I, I have I have to pay do my own health insurance. I get a stipend for it. And every year, guess what? My ins- health insurance has gone down. And my coverage has gone up. You know why? Because I shop. Do that with insurance. You can save hundreds of dollars. You know, you get that commercial. Geico will save you 50%. Yeah, for that first year. Then go somewhere else and someone else will save you 15%. And a couple of years later, Geico will come back to you and ask you to come back. It's amazing. You can save that all the time. And it could be hundreds of dollars. So you take all these things we talked about today. You can literally save thousands of dollars with little to no effort on your part. If you're just coming in now, go back. I'm, we're going to finish here shortly, and I'll post it on YouTube and also on Facebook about 10, 15 minutes from now. Go back and watch all the different tips. Uh, and then I love you. If you have some tips out there, feel free to share them with us. Uh, if you do it out next month when I do my class, before we do whatever topic we're doing next month, um, I'll share some of your tips with everybody else. Um, but you got to remember this. In con- conclusion today, you know, saving money is 100% based on the effort you're going to put in. All these tips I share with you don't do anything for you unless you actually act on them. And they all work. All these tips I've given you, we, we, I've, I've applied in my life in different ways. And it's amazing how God can then bless you. Because when you're a good steward, what's God say in Luke 16, 10? Those who are faithful at little can be trusted with much. I know you. I want much. I want more. But if you're not faithful in little, God cannot bless you more. Because why, why does he want to prove that you're faithful in little? Because then he knows that you can be trusted. Because what's a good steward have to be? He has to be found what? Trustworthy. And when you're faithful in the little things, you might think just doing the coin thing, just saving, uh, rounding up every mo- every bill you have and putting it into savings is, is not a big deal. You know what's a big deal for God? Because you're treating what God gave you, the resources that God gave you. Remember, everything you have is given to you from God, and God wants to know what you're going to do with it. And if you even do the little things, God's going to say, that's a person I can trust with more. Because they're not going to squander it. They're not going to spend it foolishly. And they're actually going to use it to not only help me, help Jesus spread the gospel, they're also going to use it so they can enjoy this life. Because when people see us succeeding in life, they're going to ask you why. And you can say, because you know what? I'm doing the way Jesus says. What a great way to share something about Jesus. Because everybody worries about money. Everybody does. And what a great way to witness to a friend saying, hey, I don't have any worries. You know why? Because I put the effort in. I've been, God's found me trustworthy. He's blessed me with more. Whenever I need it, He shows up. Wow, isn't that amazing? But you can't just wait back and just hope it happens. No, you can't do that. you got to put the effort in. And if you do that, your life will change. Your finances will change. And when your finances are better, you'll have peace. And when you're financially at peace, the other things in the world that happen, you can approach it with a different mindset. Because the number one thing that stresses people out is can they pay their bills, do they have enough money? And when you have peace about that, you can transfer that peace to the other instances in life and know you're going to be taken care of. Let me pray for you before we go today. Dear Lord, we thank you for this time together. Lord, I, I just really, I, I love trying to help people with their financial lives. Lord, that's what we're here for. And Lord, because you want them to have an amazing life. You want them to be successful. You want them to be blessed. And Lord, I hope, Lord, that they, they watch this show tonight, Lord, and those who will be watching it later, and take some of these ideas. Maybe they'll take one or two. Maybe they'll take all of the ideas and see what God can do to bless their life financially, Lord. Because as we put the effort in, you see that. You see us as trustworthy. And you say, those who are faithful little, that you will trust with more. Boy, boy, Lord, that's what we want. We want you to bless us in amazing ways so we can have the amazing life and so our life can then affect others positively for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, remember, as always, that Jesus loves you. I love you. And you are absolutely awesome.